In this video we're going to talk about how to machine pockets with islands. To begin we move up to NC, down to two axis, and over to pocket. Left mouse click on pocket and we're ready to begin. Down in the bottom left corner of the screen it asks us to select the beginning element. It doesn't matter if we chain the white pocket boundary first or the orange island boundaries first, just as long as we select all of them. I'm going to double click on the pocket boundary then double click on each individual island boundary. Once I have them selected I click on done and our tool information tab appears. I'm going to change the tool from a half inch four flute end mill to a three eighths four flute end mill. Select the four flute end mill, click OK and the next thing we need to do is change the tool number from the tool library number of 24 to the tool carousel number of 1. I'll do the same for length offset and diameter offset. Moving over to the cut control tab we can see that our cutting method is climb, our pocket cut mode is spiral, but we lack a depth, that is an amount to remove in Z. There are two ways to put this value into this field. One is to enter it by using your numbers keyboard. Another way is to click on this button right here. If I click on this button and look at the bottom left corner of the surf cam screen, it says pick the element to calculate the required Z depth. What it's asking for is for us to click on an element that shows what the depth will be. I'll click on this vertical line here and you can see the length of that line and therefore the depth of the pocket is entered into the amount to remove in Z. The only thing left for us to do now is change our rough spacing in Z to a quarter of an inch. Then I'll move down to our lead in and lead out move and I'll change the lead in from none to arc on final and accept the defaults. I'll do the same for the lead out move. Change it from none to arc on final, click OK and then OK down at the bottom. The final question is asking us to click inside a pocket. That is it wants us to click inside the pocket boundary but outside of the island boundaries. So anywhere I click in here will be fine. I'll click on the screen, accept the tool path, and if we look at a top view of the part, you can see that we have avoided all of the islands, machined within the pocket, and have a lead in and lead out move on all the islands and also on the pocket boundary. Another consideration that occurs during pocketing is what to do when the islands are at different Z levels. In this example the two orange islands are at Z level 0 while the cyan and dark blue island are at different Z levels below the top of the part. To show how this works I'm going to go to the operations manager and right mouse click on our original two axis pocket toolpath. I'll left mouse click on regenerate toolpath and reselect geometry and I'll apply these parameters to the new geometry. If we look at cut control we're still cutting a half inch deep, quarter inch at a time, with an arc on final for both lead in and lead out. I'll choose OK and then I'll chain the geometry. Chaining the pocket boundary followed by the islands. Once all the islands are selected I'm going to click on done and then SurfCam asks us to click inside a pocket. I'll click inside the pocket and there's our tool path. To see how this works I'm going to go up to the top and click on the tool path verification button and run the simulation. I'll slow down the speed slightly and click on play. As you can see even though the island depths were at different Z levels all the islands are at the same Z level in the simulation. That's because SurfCam uses the highest level island geometry to calculate the geometry for the entire part. There is an easy way to fix this though, however. If I exit verification, go back to the operations manager, and right mouse click on our toolpath, I'm going to regenerate the toolpath this time with original geometry. Everything else is going to be the same as before except I'm going to go to two axis options. Under two axis options we have a setting over here that says path island depths. Constant means that all the islands are at the same Z level. In this example they're not. So I'm going to change it from constant to multiple. I'll then click OK. 
The toolpath is recreated and you can see a difference immediately. If I look at the top of the part, some of the islands are machined over in the first passes. If we look at a front view of the part, you can see that SurfCam is adjusting the toolpath to compensate for the height of the islands. If we look at this in verification once again, we should see a difference. Running the simulation here shows us four islands, two with the same Z-level, two at different Z-levels.